When people do this stuff, like Bloomberg, he's running. I've said this before. He, when he's running for uh, you know the Democratic primary, if he wins the Democratic primary, I'm sure he'd be excited about it. But that's not the the primary reason he's winning. He's running. He's running because he wants to set himself up. If Bernie or Warren maybe is the nominee, he wants to be able to run a third party thing. And and it doesn't mean he's definitely going to. He wants to sit, put himself in the position of making this assessment. He's so rich that he will spend 50 to a hundred million dollars just to put him in itself in a position where he doesn't say, I may or may not have a chance of looking at this, right? Like he is just, this is, this is like, I'm trying to think of an analogy in our daily lives where we're like, you know what? Maybe I should just call and reserve a babysitter just in case I feel like going to the movies. That's basically what's going on here. And I'll, I'll give the babysitter a $20 kill fee. That's basically what he's doing. He's just purchasing an option to run in third party. And he's like, I'll spend $100 million on the option. And if I decide to go forward, I'll spend another, I don't know, $500 million. In fact, I'll probably spend I don't know, $750 million. What the hey? Why not? Can't take it with me. Is he divorced? Is he settled all his divorce stuff? Is he was is he has he ever been married? Yeah. Yeah, it's, my kids are out my kids are out of college. Doesn't look like I'll be getting that free college, so I might as well just spend it on the an option to run as an independent. Here he is. Bloomberg has a fascinating idea about democracy, about the definition of dictatorship. It's fascinating. Every leader of every country, regardless of how they lead, you could be the strongest, the most militaristic dictator in the history of the world. And there are people who you have to answer to at the very least, like you have to make sure that Brutus isn't going to shove a knife in your back. And somehow Michael Bloomberg equates that with some semblance of people power. Here he is on the firing line with Margaret Hoover, right? Is that her name? Margaret Hoover. And that's on PBS. And let me just say this. When Margaret Hoover is the voice of reason, you know you have a problem. So the United States currently accounts for about 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Yes. China accounts for roughly 30% of greenhouse yep. gas emissions. How do we, even if we get to net zero, how do you get China, okay. India, and the other countries okay. no, to be good Ch partners? China is doing a lot. Yes, they're still building a bunch of coal-fired power plants. And they're still burning coal. Yes, they are. But they are now moving plants away from the cities. They are, the, the, the Communist Party wants to stay in power in China, and they listen to the public. When the public says, I can't breathe the air, Xi Jinping is not a dictator. He has to satisfy his constituents or he's not going to survive. He's power. not a dictator? No, he has to. He has a constituency to uh, to to, to uh, um, uh, answer to. He doesn't and have a vote. He doesn't have a democracy. He doesn't. That he's doesn't not held mean accountable he can by voters. If his, if his advisors I mean, is, is gave they him, they check on him just a revolution. You're not going to have a revolution. Nobody, well, then, no government survives without the will of the majority of its people. Pause it. Okay. Excuse me. I mean, what? I guess if you wait long enough, right, no government survives forever. Uh, we do have examples of things like apartheid. I mean, arguably also Iraq until we invaded. Now, I guess you could argue like that was. But there's a big gulf of difference between no government survives without the will of the people if you don't put a timeline on that. And you also discount revolution. The fact that they're moving these coal fire power plants away from the cities is not because like the we're afraid of a referendum movement on uh, whether we want to be able to breathe. It's also just sort of like 
to survive as a nation, we may uh, we may need to not have so many people die of a uh, mesothelioma, you know, at an early age. But the idea that he equates. So who is a dictator? Kim Jong Un get in on this? Right, exactly. I just look. I get. It's got advisors. Yeah, I got advisors, and uh, I wouldn't be here if I didn't have the will of the people. Well, no too. government survives without the will of the majority of its people. Okay, it, it's just he, he has to deliver services. The Chinese Communist Party looks at Russia, and they look for where the Communist Party is, and they don't find it anymore, and uh -huh. they don't want that to happen. I mean, I, the, the idea that the Chinese government is responsive to sort of a, a democratic expression of fresh oh, air, come on, clean of air. Of course they are. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at the people and I love Hong how Kong, I, I love like how I love how just completely condescending this guy is. Imagine if Bernie did this about like Morales or some or Maduro. <laughs> it's 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 stunning. Fashion of fresh oh, air, come on, clean of air. Course they are. I mean, I, I I'm looking at the people in Hong oh, come Kong on. who go, are come on. Go, protesting go back and, go and, back and read wondering the, whether the Chinese government cares the what they have to the say. The days when you have big pollution in 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 Beijing, and they're doing something about it. That's that's yeah. ridiculous. The trouble is you can't overnight move cement plants and power plants just outside the city that are polluting the air, and you have to have their product. So some of it takes time. And there's always in, in, in government, even governments that aren't what we would call a democracy, there's <laughs> lots of stakeholders who have vested interests. And they have an impact. And that's why, if you listen to the- Pause it for one second. First of all, what do you mean we would call democracy? He's, he's saying that the reason why we, we don't contemplate that China is a democracy is because we have a, um, some type of chauvinistic version of democracy. Yes, there's always stakeholders. The dukes, the earls, the weapons manufacturers, the... And here he goes. Now he's going to complain about the young millennials. This guy. Wow. So some of it takes time. And there's always in, in, in government, even governments that aren't what we would call a democracy, there's lots of stakeholders who have vested interests. And they have an impact. And that's why if you listen to the young millennials, let's go in and solve the problem overnight. Yeah, that would be great if you didn't have to fund it and get it through legal things. <laughs> <laughs> legal things. Oh, that's nice. Fund it and get it through legal things. Finishing strong. Yeah, that would be great if you didn't have to fund it and get it through legal things. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Boom. Unbelievable, this guy. Billionaires are so smart. Like, so smart. They're like superhumans. Really, the way you do this is you define yourself around... Uh, what is this Charlie Kirk one? Oh, that's... 